look at these polling numbers, what we see is that a plurality of Americans think that the U.S. has actually done worse when it comes to testing compared to other countries. And this mirrors what we've seen in some other public opinion data recently. For example, a Pew poll that came out recently showed that most Americans think that the U.S. has done a fair or poor job dealing with COVID, putting them right in the middle of the pack uh, compared to some other countries uh, and compared to the WHO. I think what this data shows us is that Americans generally aren't, um, you know, overwhelmed by the response to uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, however, like everything else that we're seeing lately with COVID-19, there is a big partisan difference here. Partisanship is a huge driver in your perceptions of how well the U.S. is doing when it comes to testing, when it comes to a response compared to other countries. Um, and as we at Ipsos have done some polling on, Partisanship also drives your trust in government. So fundamentally, whether you trust the actors that are involved to do the right thing when it comes to the COVID-19 pandemic. And our polling shows something similar to this poll, which is that trust in the federal government is broken. And really the only people that are trusting the federal government right now are partisans, are Republicans. So there are two types of testing that people need to know about. There's antibody tests or immunity testing. We're not primarily talking about that. We're primarily focused on testing for the disease, for the virus. Uh, we use something called PCR. There are other techniques. Um, but the idea is that you need to be able to test to identify who's sick. And the main reason you need to identify who's infected is so they don't infect other people and you can separate them and let everybody who's not infected get back to their daily business. And so that's why testing is so incredibly important for helping our economy open up and helping us get our lives back. So there is very broad agreement among public health people, really across the political spectrum, across different scientific uh, uh, expertise, that we need a lot more testing than we have. The analysis that we did suggested that America needed uh, about 900,000 to a million tests a day to open up safely um, other experts have estimated that it might, we might even need five or 10 million tests a day. And, you know, the bottom line is more testing essentially gives us more freedom, lets us do more things. But if you're less than 900,000 a day, and right now we're about three to 400,000 a day, what you really get into is a scarcity situation where you can't test all the people you need to be testing. And it really slows down our ability to open up safely. We have heard the president often say, you know, uh, anybody who needs a test can get a test. We know that's actually just not true in most states. Um, he said, you know, we are uh, doing enough testing. Well, it sort of depends on enough for what. We know in the White House, when there was an outbreak with a couple of people, they started testing everybody every day. Uh, now, we don't need to necessarily do that for all Americans, but we do need to be able to test a bit more often so people feel comfortable going back. So the question is, why can't we test as much as we need to? And part of it is, you know, this is a new test. We didn't even exist a few months ago. And so in order to scale it up to the levels that we need that other countries have been able to scale up, um, we really can't just rely on the private sector alone. The private sector is great. They've been very innovative, but they can't scale up a product to millions and millions of people within weeks, not in the middle of a pandemic. And then the, the strategy of the federal government has just been to leave it up to states. And states have a very important role to play in testing, and they should be at the lead. But they really need federal help because the supply chains behind these uh, tests are national supply chains. They're often international supply chains. And so, you know, big states like New York or California might be able to manage. But, you know, we don't really want Delaware out there competing against the Chinese government to get supplies from Italy. Like, that's not a good strategy for our country. And so one of the major reasons is that we've just had very little federal guidance, leadership and engagement in helping states ramp up testing the way they need it. So I'm actually pretty optimistic about where testing is going in that we have new platforms, new technologies, antigen testing, um, CRISPR-based testing, ge uh, genomic sequencing. These are new technologies that are coming online. And I think there will be many states that will be able to substantially ramp up testing because of these technologies. The problem is without federal engagement, without federal help, without federal guarantees that people will be able to pay for these tests uh, and will be able to have them available, you're not going to 
see widespread availability of these technologies. So they will create some states that have them, uh, bigger, more powerful, wealthier states will have them, and smaller, poorer states will have a harder time accessing these technologies. And that'll have a real effect on what happens with people's health and their lives.